What is going on everyone? In this video, we are gonna be talking about the client server model. And the client server model is an extremely important concept in terms of how machines communicate with each other and how they exchange information over the internet. Um, if you're in IT or if you're a developer or you're looking to become a developer, the client server model is an essential concept that you need to know about because you're gonna be using it when you're building your applications. You're either gonna be building client components or server components or perhaps something in between. Uh, so in terms of the agenda for this video, first we're gonna briefly just define what the client and server are in the context of the client server model. Then I'm gonna go over the relationship between these two components and how the client server model works. And then finally, we're gonna talk about some of the alternatives to the client server model towards the end of the video. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. So let's get right into it. And over here on the left, I already have kind of the icons that are uh, giving you a clue as to what I'm talking about here. But as you can imagine, all of these things on the left-hand side of your screen over here, these are all clients. Uh, so clients can be, in this case, web browsers. So, you know, Firefox browser, Chrome, um, or Safari. They can be something like an iPhone or an iPad or some kind of tablet device, or they can be a program such as a Python, Java, or a C++ program that is running on your computer. Um, so clients in, in this context, in the client server model, are the ones that are requesting information. They, need, they want information. They want to get it from somewhere. And that's how they get the name, the client. You know, like if you go into a restaurant and you order something, you want something. You're the client. And the restaurant is the resource. And that's where the, the server kind of comes in. Uh, so in the client server model, the clients are any of these three things. They could be browsers, devices, or even programs that are running on other computers. But the common thing between them all is that generally they speak to servers in some kind of network protocol language. Uh, HTTP is probably the most common one these days. So these are some different examples of clients in the client server model. Uh, so just to reiterate, they want to get information from somewhere else. Now, the next obvious question in this is where is that something else or what is that something else? And that's where the server comes in, the server. And the server doesn't necessarily have to be a single physical machine. It's more of a concept. Uh, so if it helps you, you can imagine it as like a physical uh, machine, like a physical computer that's, that's receiving traffic, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It could be different virtual servers that are within a certain machine, but generally in the client server model, we're just kind of thinking about the concepts here. Uh, so the server in this relationship is the provider of information. So let me just write that out for you. So the server is often called the provider, provider. And it's called the provider because it has access to some kind of information. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to have that information stored locally. It could just know how to get it or where to get it from. Uh, that's basically the role of the server. So typically what you see these days is that a server usually is tied to some kind of database somewhere that may exist on some other system. And then say this, this blue icon here is your database. And then when a request comes into the server, it just goes and retrieves that from the database and then grabs that data, the database responds, and then the server kind of res responds with that information back to the client. But we're gonna go over that whole relationship in just a moment. Uh, so the server exposes a set of APIs, also known as application programming interfaces. Uh, think of this like the contract in which if you give me something, I'll give you something back. Uh, that's what an API essentially is. If you want more detail on an API, I have a whole video on that. I'll put that in the description section below. Um, but in the client server model, I think we're moving on to the next section now. Um, in the client server model, the server provides, the client wants something, and you have this kind of dance that goes on between them. The client requests information, generally through what's called a HTTP request. HTTP request, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Um, so the general theme is that you have these clients over here and these clients make requests to a server and the server receives that request, goes out and grabs it maybe from a database. It's also possible that this server here talks to another server and it goes and gets some information from that server and then maybe this server queries a different database. But the general idea is that this server through its APIs, just put a little box here, uh, to denote that it exposes APIs. Uh, it knows how to go and get information or perform some kind of operation that is agreed upon or known by the client. 
And the client doesn't necessarily need to know how the server works or, or how it does its job or where it stores its information or any of the details here. The client just needs to know who do I call to do what I wanna do and what do I get back from the server? Now, now completing this example, when the client calls this API, uh, the server is going to get that information. It's going to maybe query some database, call another server, like I already said, and return that information back to the client. And then the, the client can observe that information. It can show some UIs or some user interfaces or some buttons on the screen. And then the client or the user can perform some other kind of action that makes another request to a different server. Uh, so this is generally how the client server model works. You have your clients, which are usually browsers, programs, or some kind of input devices. You have servers that are listening for traffic on certain ports they have a contract or an API associated with them. And when that API is called, the server knows how to perform a certain job and return a result back to the client. And this is how the internet works. It's how information travels between, you know, the, the device in your pocket and a server sitting somewhere in the internet. It could be anywhere in the world, but as long as your client knows how to talk to a server, you know, it doesn't matter where that server is located as long as this contract is being upheld. And a term that usually goes hand in hand with a client server model is what's called the centralized approach or centralized framework. Um, and they're called centralized because these servers are the kind of single source where all this information, this authoritative information is located. And the clients are kind of decentralized in this relationship. They are existing anywhere on the internet, but the servers are the ones that are really the, the key to this relationship because they are the data providers. And without data, you can have rich functionality. I mean, if you think about it, if you're logging into your bank's website through you know, your Firefox browser or something, your browser itself doesn't allow you to do that much. The only way that you get rich information, you get rich functionality out of using your browser is by interacting with servers on the banking systems network so that you can go and get the account balance and pay bills and do all these different things. So in this way, it makes sense to think of the server as the centralized component in this relationship. And the opposing concept or the opposing philosophy in contrast with the centralized approach is what's called the P2P or peer-to-peer peer to peer. And let me just scroll down a little bit, maybe make a little bit more room here. And the peer to peer approach is what you would think of in terms of like a BitTorrent network or a torrent network. So you have different folks that all download a torrent file. And if you don't know how torrents works, like this is essentially how it works. I'm going to explain it to you right now. So there's multiple people that download this torrent file. So maybe there's like three actors in this story. So each person in this relationship that has downloaded this file acts as both a consumer and a producer. So they are in our our client server model, both a client and a server of information. So with every other participant in this relationship, you can request data from a different participant and you can also receive requests for data that you have. And this is why it's kind of a peer to peer relationship. Everyone else that is in this network can kind of feed off of each other so that there's no centralized approach. One, there's no one key player in this relationship that holds all the goods. And that's what we saw in the server model. So this is how it's different. The peer-to-peer -peer model is decentralized. Everyone shares an equal role. Everyone is both a producer and a consumer. Um, so this is the idea of the client server model. And just to recap, we have the clients like your browser, your phone, or just programs in general that are the requesters of information. We have the servers, which are the resources or the providers of information. And data is exchanged through APIs in which the client calls a particular API on a server that is listening on a particular port and the server responds with that information. And that's how the internet gets awesome functionality. So I hope you you enjoyed this video i have another great one on apis which you should check out on the right here and as always if you like this please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you next time